into uh, to, and I don't know how much time if you have time constraints. So. As much time as you need oh, okay, or great. you want <laughs> until you get tired of speaking to me. Oh, that could be a Which long basically time. Basically, means it's ad infinitum because yeah, to yeah. get tired of speaking to me is an impossibility. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The only part I might get tired of is listening because I like to talk. So that's ah, the only well, challenge. <laughs> okay, I'll try to keep more quiet. No, 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 no. You're doing great. <laughs> I did not mean that. Um, I, I meant the part of me liking to talk, not the part of uh, listening. <laughs> so, so let me let me let me uh, uh, posit something and and tell me if if you agree or disagree or how that fits in. I mean, it strikes me, and, and I'm a, I believe in free will. I think you do from, from what I've heard. I know Sam doesn't, but I think you do. So my view is that, that we are, we're, that every one of us, there's a component, evolutionary component, there's a genetic component that, that uh, has a say in who and what we are. There's clearly environmental component. There's, there's influences. And then there's the choices we have made along the way to engage with, our minds are not to engage, to be lazy, or to use our reason. And that, to me, that is the most important component, and that, in a sense, can override the others. In, in that's what makes us human: our ability to override them. Does that is, is that make sense? Does that is that the way you think about the world? So, so let me step. Let, let me take out the free will conversation from the, okay. the discussion for a bit. Uh, so, one of the there are many points on which the tractors of evolutionary psychology will like to focus on, each of which are perfectly incorrect. Uh, some of them are scientifically based, but most of them are ideologically based. In other words, most of the people who hate something about evolutionary psychology, it's because it attacks their essential pet ideology of theirs. Sure. So if I am religious, I hate evolutionary psychology because where is God in your thing? If I'm a postmodernist, I hate evolutionary psychology because there are no human universals. If I'm a radical feminist, I hate evolutionary psychology because it's not true that there are evolved sex differences and so on and so forth, yep. okay? Uh, so one of the things that people argue regarding evolutionary psychology is they say, oh, but it is a form of, well, it is not a form, it is the form of biological determinism. If you provide a biological evolutionary genetic explanation for a phenomenon, then this argues that we are slave to simply execute that algorithm. And of course, that is profoundly idiotic because for most things, not all, but for most things, as you correctly said, we are an interaction of our genes and our unique environments. Even genes themselves get turned on or off depending on environmental inputs. So the correct position that all evolutionists take is the interactionist position. So to argue that something is biological based doesn't remove the influence of the environment. So anybody who tells you that evolutionary psychology is biologically deterministic is simply advertising, I'm a moron who doesn't understand anything. That's all he's saying, okay? okay. So, so on, that, on that issue, it's clear. The, the issue of free will, I'm kind of uh, puzzled by it. And I should mention, I haven't done enough reading on all of the different uh, you know, uh, schools of thoughts on sure. free will. Sure. But if I were to summarize, given my very limited reading and exposure to sort of the free will debate, uh, Sam Harris and Jerry Coyne, both of whom have been on my show and are good friends, sure. basically argue, look, we are nothing more than basic natural laws. And if you unfold all of the cascading, you know, physical reactions that are all materialist, then we arrive at the point that we're at and that's it. It could be nothing else. That seems profoundly uh, unimpressive to me. Yep. Here's another one that they usually say. Uh, the brain will oftentimes have, there's a delay between yeah. when you recognize that you're going to do something and the neuronal signature. That again doesn't suggest that you don't have free will. No. It literally just means that there is a neuronal lag between you being aware of it and your brain actually manifest, manifesting that neural activation pattern. So to me, maybe because I'm not into all of this uh, sort of mental masturbation, I see it as a profoundly useless debate because if free will is something that doesn't exist, then I'm really wasting my time trying to yep. study psychology of decision making. Yep. Because what is, is let's all go and have a beer, right? Uh, so I might be missing something and I'm sure there will be tons of messages at the bottom of this sure, comment sure. saying, I thought that God said what's smart, but my <laughs> God, what a moron, he doesn't understand. To me, uh, 
uh, of course we are bound by physical laws, but ultimately when I'm trying to decide whether I'm going to marry person A or B or buy Coke or Pepsi, I, I don't understand where the free will conversation comes in. Maybe you can enlighten me. Well, I mean, it's a it's it's an ancient conversation. It goes back to Greek philosophers, and it's it's been debated to no end. And I'm not a philosopher, so I'm not going to try to 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 kill that. But uh, you know, the, even with the with the neurological issue, right? So, what example do they use? Raising your hand, and I, and I'm quite willing to accept that whether I raise my hand at every given point in time is determined by lots of other things that come beforehand. So where do you put the essence of what free will is, the, the engagement of free will? I, so I start by the fact that, first of all, I know I have free will because I know I have free will. I can, I can tell that I'm making choices. Something is, is making a choice, and by very word that we use, choices, decisions, that means that there are options. That? What's they, that? They sure. will respond to that. Forgive me for interrupting sure. you. They will respond that it's an uh, illusion. It's exactly. You've it's illusion. evolved the illusion because it makes sense for you to be deluded in that way via that free will illusion. That is the same argument the postmodernists give to me when I say, this is a pen. It's an absolutely unequivocal. I can see it. And I can touch yeah. it. Well, to me, introspection is like seeing and touching just about you, about your own nature. You cannot, the reason doesn't mean anything if, if, if it's not some, it, if it's not, if there's no free will. It's just, a, it's just a, 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 a straightforward physical, biological process that we engage in. All the decisions have already been predetermined in a sense. And even if you have the, the, the environmental component, well, that's again just deterministic and it's all just deterministic. It's, it's one big... To me, they, what, so, so Rand's view is that, that the essence of free will is this idea of engaging your mind or disengaging it. Folk, like you get up in the morning and you kind of dozed off, a, you know, you're half asleep. And you, you actually make an effort, okay, I'm gonna focus now. Or you sit down to write a paper, right? You sit down to, to write the research, and you say, okay, I'm really gonna focus now. That focus is what is the essence of free will. In a sense, everything flows from that. Now, can I explain it biologically? Can I explain it physically in terms of, no, but there are lots of things I can't explain in science you can't yet explain physically or biologically. But I can see it. Right, in a sense, I can see it in myself. Now, yes, you can say it's an illusion, but then we might all be just in a vat, right? And this could all be a dream. That's the same argument. It's a silly argument. You, you, we have to rely on our senses. We have to rely on, on, on our own observations about the world. But how, how, and, and again, maybe someone's already proposed yep. this argument, so please hold your hate mail. Uh, I'm a <laughs> novice on this debate, if only because it profoundly, I found it profoundly uh, unsatisfying as a as a as a point of discussion. Sure. I, mean, I don't mean that you bring it up, yeah. but just as a as something sure. that I'm going, I'm willing to spend two, you know, reading two thousand years. Right? But let let's. What if I were a machine uh, uh, that simply does? So actually, I'm called the GAD machine. Yeah. So that if if you present me with two women, the the manifest preference that I would choose is woman A. In other words, if all the cascade of all of the uh, physical laws that would result in me instantiating my preference to woman A, I now create a not GAD machine. So whatever I was going to manifest as my choice, I now choose the opposite of that, yep. right? So what would, so then what would that be? Would that be that, oh, but that's, that's simply the cascade of neuronal, I mean. Yeah, and it's, and, it, and you see, it's, you can't, from the, it might be possible to create a machine that we from the outside cannot tell if it has free will or not. B but we're not, we have experiences, we have a consciousness, we, 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 we experience life, right? Machines mm -hmm. don't experience. Right. Not, they don't, they're not conscious. Uh, animals have experience, and maybe they have some free will, it's hard to tell if they make choices or not. But we, through introspection, can tell that we're making choices. So I, so I, I agree with you, it, it, it matters because there's no morality if, the, if we're all deterministic. Nothing matters if we're all deterministic. Right. It's, what's the point of studying things if we're all deterministic? We, you know, go to the beach and I, I don't even know what that matters. If, if but, but then, so let me ask you this. Uh, so what, what is the main reason? Maybe this is, a, uh, maybe it's, this is too difficult of a question. Yeah. What is the fundamental intellectual reason for this debate? So for example, you might say, oh. well, for some people, they want to argue that there is no free will because that serves to excuse 
people's actions and they want to be softer on crime. I'm making this up. I don't know. Yeah. So what what is the intellectual pull of this conversation that I'm missing? Well, the intellectual pull is in philosophy, certainly moral agency, right? Okay. Are you responsible? I think that's the fundamental. I think for somebody like Sam, and I'm speculating here, and I, you know, I, I'm sure he'll contradict me, but it's he wants to be a scientist. He wants everything to be grounded in science, and he views free will as mystical somehow. It's, a, it's, it's this little spark of God. And the right. truth is that in the past, most defenders of free will have defended it on mystical grounds. And so when he, so he, I think he's thrown out the baby with the bathwater mm. when he rejects religion and he's rejected everything mystical, and I'm all for that. I'm rejecting for everything mystical, but I don't think free will has to be viewed as mystical. It might be something we still don't understand. There's a lot of phenomena in the natural world we still don't understand, but it's a natural phenomena that we can all observe just as we observe any other scientific phenomena. And I think that's what you're saying is, look, I deal with free will all day. I don't call it that because I deal with choices, but if without choices, this is all just mechanistic. It would be uninteresting if I was just analyzing the decision-making of robots because so all, all he, I'd look is I'm an sorry. algorithm. Yeah, go ahead. So what would he say? And again, I'm asking yeah. you to put yourself in his, yeah. and it's only because you probably are much more familiar with this yeah. debate than I am. So when I wake up every day and try to understand the evolutionary roots of human behavior, what would Sam say about that exercise? Is it still worthwhile? Because notwithstanding the fact that we don't have free will, at least it allows me to predict behavior better. Would that be his position? He would say, and again, <laughs> this is me trying to channel Sam Adams, sure. which is very hard because he's brilliant and, you know, and it, I mean, he's, he's, he's a f phenomenal mind. But my guess is what he's saying is the more knowledge we have, the more inputs into our computers, the better decisions, the better outcomes we will have. So while I'm not choosing, but the more exposed I am to truth, the more information the computer has, the better the outcome coming out of it. I, I think that's how he'd explain it. I'm not um, moved, but okay, thanks for the explanation. So, so, uh, so